find who is calling to you. They may have answers. I'm going with you. Anna? No. Excuse me, I climbed the North Mountain, survived a frozen heart, and saved you from my ex-boyfriend. So, you know, I'm coming. That's normal. There are so many live actions coming out now from Disney. So when Frozen gets remade into a live action film, do you think you'd be cast as Anna? And if not, who would you want to play Anna? I have never thought about this question before. I didn't even think that they could do it as a live action, but obviously they can. No, I wouldn't be cast because I'm way too old. We're way too old. It's one of the reasons we didn't do the Broadway show. I called Josh and Adina and I was like, you guys, should we open the Broadway show just for a couple months? It'd be so fun. Yeah. And Adina was like, do you know how old we are? <laughs> and Josh was like, do you think I'm going to be in a snowman suit? So that was a hard pass. But um, wow. I don't even know. I don't even know. Definitely not me, although I'd do it if they asked. If you had to pick one person to play Anna, who do you think? I don't even, I would have to think so thoroughly about it. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Big shoes to fill. Well, yeah, it would have to be a, a weirdo. Anna's a weirdo, and that's the best part about her. I love Anna. So in Wreck-It Ralph, we see all the princesses. Mae Whitman. May I just thought Whitman. of it. Debbie Mae Whitman. Yes. She can sing and she's a mega weirdo. And she's been like my firstborn child for since she was 20 years old. <laughs> It'd be Mae Whitman for sure. Somebody write that down. <laughs> I got it. I'll tweet it out. I'll make it happen. I love it. Um, so in Wreck-It Ralph, we get to see all the princesses team up. Has a sort of Avengers-style princess team-up movie been discussed? No, but you have a lot of good ideas. And I think we should discuss this afterwards with some Disney executives. Um, that would be unbelievable no it has not been discussed but it will be discussed when we conclude this interview <laughs> i love would you be down if that happened? yes oh my gosh of course the teams that write these movies are incredibly thoughtful they're they make the experience fun because it's collaborative like anna was not the girl that you see in this movie when she was first on the page right. that was this infusion of me saying can i really play the girl that i needed to see when i was 10 years old someone who was really goofy, kind of a weirdo, very klutzy, wore her heart on her sleeve. I need to represent that girl for me, for me as a little girl. And they yeah. were like, yes, absolutely. So there's so much thought behind and heart behind these movies. I have no doubt that a epic princess team up is a great idea. Yes, and Anna would definitely be the star of that film. I agree, I feel like people need to see themselves reflected on screen in the way that Anna was. Yeah, you know? and there's so many different types of people. That's one thing I loved so much about the first one is how different the sisters are. You can have two people that are sort of similar and you can have them have an argument or a disagreement and make a storyline about that. But this storyline was about the differences and how to overcome familial love because Elsa is both vulnerable and shy and really strong and powerful at the same time. And Anna is the polar opposite. She's living for everyone else. She's living out loud. And how do you have a fierce familial love with someone who's your polar opposite? Right, exactly. Well, she nails it. My last question for you is sort of a scenario. Okay. You're auditioning for Frozen 3. Okay. And they want... I have to audition? <laughs> and, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they want you to rap. Could you give us like a Ham Hamilton style a sort of Frozen 3 rap? No, I need to call in Manuel Miranda and have him write it first <laughs> because I, I improved a fair amount in this movie, but it was only after something was on the page. I don't know how I would even do that. Do what parts did you improv for this movie? The, um, some of, I'm trying to think of some of the things that made it into this movie. I've only seen it a few times, so I haven't memorized it yet. But in the first one, the whole wait what is something that I say normally mm. out of confusion and talking too fast. And the, 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 one of the main things that made it in and was sort of the through line was when Kristoff, I mean, when Hans and Anna are in the boat and they fall in the beginning and Anna says, um, this is awkward. You're not awkward. You're gorgeous. Wait, what? Yeah. That was um, just something that Jen and I in the room, Jen was like, just say, I guess, what you think you would say. And I was like, I know exactly what I'd say if a very handsome man had fallen into a boat with me. I'd, I'd say, um, this is awkward. You're not awkward. I'm awkward. You're gorgeous. Wait, Wait what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, you're older and thus all-knowing. Do you ever worry about the notion that nothing is permanent? Uh, no. Really? Wow, I can't wait until I'm aged like you so I don't have to worry about important things. Kristoff finally has his own musical number. Did you guys get to add to the music at all? With the, you don't need to do much adding to a song that's written by 
I think, the two greatest living composers right now, uh, or two of the greatest living composers right now, Bobby Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez. You know, this is my third collaboration with Bobby, second with Kristen, Book of Mormon, Frozen, and now Frozen 2. And they just have a way of gifting you these iconic songs that you know you're just step one in a process by which millions and millions and millions of other people are eventually going to get their hands and vocal cords on. Mm, that's so true. Right? Totally. But his song steals the show in yeah. this one and, and, and makes me very angry and, and jealous. <laughs> so not true. Did you put your own spin on it? Not at all. No, the, Josh is so right on. They, they write so intentionally and they, they also in addition to writing really great songs, write only for story. So Bobby and Kristen can write anything, and they, can, they can't they can really write a bad song, but I think what really sets them apart in a, in a major way is that they're really invested in the dramatic evolution of the story. And so any song that they write is embedded in the story and embedded in the characters, and that's all the way down to the notes in the song, with the length of the notes in the song, and that every single specific word is incredibly well thought out and incredibly intentional, and it's a total privilege to be able to, to sing it. Right, not only does it push the story forward, it's also catchy. So. Exactly, yeah. which is really hard to yeah. do. Um, Frozen <clears throat> will be made into a live action one day. You, when it does, do you think you'd be cast as your characters, and if not, who would you want to play your characters? I hope we're both in our 80s by the point that it's done. Um, uh, like, hopefully, and if so, probably not. Um, but who would you want? You want Brad Pitt, right? Yeah. Tell, why won't you just Brad right. Pitt to, to be in everything? That's going to be a problem for me, because I also want Brad Pitt for a while. <laughs> I Maybe think we should just do a role swap, and we could be Anna and Elsa in the live That would actually be really cool. Right. But I was also thinking, like, could be that Olaf and Kristoff are like a reunion for Leo and Brad. <laughs> like that would be an yeah. unexpected follow up to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Totally. Like. That would be great. Yeah, like no one would see it coming. Totally. You know, why couldn't Tarantino make that his 10th and final <laughs> film? Just tell me why he couldn't. I can't think of a reason. I know why he could, but <laughs> So, like, I think that we've just solved the problem. Yeah. Once yeah. Upon Disney, a time you're welcome. In yeah. yeah so that's good. good. Okay. So, my last question is more of a scenario. Okay. You're auditioning for Frozen 3 and they want you to rap a new song. Would you guys, Hamilton, a Frozen 3 song for mm, us right now? Right now? Yes. Yo, 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 go, Josh. <coughs> oh, no. Here I am, Olaf Kristoff and Sven. We're walking into Arendelle again. Hey, I'll tell you what, it's as cold as ever, except this time we got a newer flavor. <laughs> Wait, can we add this? That was really good. I got really scared. I was like, no, oh. you were good. That was really. It's me and Lin Manuel Miranda are the two best at this thing, I feel it's true. like. We, yeah. we really, you know, my. Uh, my Andrew Jackson rap project hasn't yet made its. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait for that Broadway debut. It's yeah. controversial, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, and uh, you'll see it shortly uh, <laughs> in New York City. How did you get in the forest? The mist parted for us. Impossible. Where did you learn magic? You're coming into an established musical. Did you guys train for this? What was your audition song? What was the audition process like? After I've been training my whole life for whole this. Whole life. <laughs> Honestly, when I got called in to do the audition, I had just gotten finished doing a Disney cabaret with my band where we sang nothing but obscure Disney songs. Two weeks wow. later, I get the call for this audition and I thought this is, couldn't be better timing, I'm primed for this. And I remember walking in going, I know what to do. I just, I know what to do. Um, I've been obsessed sing? with Disney my whole life. Which one did you sing? Well, they wanted, <clears throat> uh, um, they wanted me to sing something in the style of Disney, but not a Disney song. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm sure they're tired of hearing them. So I right. sang the, a Lumineer song, but like a Disney princess. Okay. What song was that? Angela. <gasps> Could you do it? For me? <laughs> 
Angela's one of my favorite Lumineers. So. Strangers in this town, they raise you up just to cut you down. Oh, Angela, it's a long time coming. So, right? Need to add that to the film. <laughs> so you so do good. It. Wow. You do it in that style. And and they clapped. And, and <laughs> Jennifer got like choked up. And I was like, oh, I think that went really well. I don't know. And then I didn't hear anything for like a month. And then got the call and cried. So. <laughs> That's amazing. What was your experience? I was not as prepared <laughs> as Evan was. Like, this is the first time I've had to sing for a gig, right? Oh, I wow. sang in grad school. I did high school musicals, etc. So I did um, uh, Wheels of a Dream from Ragtime, <gasps> right? Yeah. Because they wanted something sort of low or what have you. And I went to my wife's voc vocal coach. And she helped me sort of get the song prepared and ready. And as I went in to sing it, they're like, okay, so you ready? And I was like, everybody's sitting behind the booth and they're watching behind the glass. And I was like, is there any way? They're like, do you want us to close the curtain? I was like, yes, please. Could you, <laughs> could you please close the curtain? And so they're like, okay. Even though there's a camera in there and they could just look in the monitor. But I asked them to close the curtain. And then me and the accompanist went at it and it turned out okay. Obviously. Right? Obviously, you know, but then again, it was a month as they went and like yeah. checked out then for a few other people. Then you don't hear anything, you just think, well, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so yeah. nerve wracking. Well, congratulations. <laughs> what were your children's thoughts on you landing these roles? My, my kids were pretty excited. Um, the youngest in particular, because he's, he's got this really sweet, my oldest tries to act like he's too cool for school, <laughs> but then every once in a while I'll catch him, like we were at Pete's Dragon and he was bawling his eyes out oh. and he hardly ever cries. And he goes like, Daddy, are you crying? I say, yeah, man. He goes, I'm crying too. <laughs> and so, Aww. and so he, every once in a while he lets it down, but for the most part he tries to keep it up. But the baby, he's walking around, he's got his Elsa and Anna dolls and a little carry tote or whatnot, like totally excited for the movie. He's so in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's awesome. That's so cute. Yeah, my son walks around with the <clears throat> Queen of Duna doll now. But I remember when I went for the audition, I looked at him and I, because I, I used to sing him Disney lullabies to go to sleep all the time. Aww. And so I went, I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to audition for, for a Disney movie now and I'm going to be thinking of you when I sing the song. And he goes, I hope they clap for you. And Aww. they did. I sang the song, they all clapped, and I came home and I went, hey, guess what? They, they clapped. He knew. <laughs> he knew. And then I got it. And That's I was like, amazing. I got it because of you. What would I do without you? You'll always have me. Has Elsa seemed weird to you? She seems like Elsa. There's this voice. Voice? What does that mean? Congratulations on the film. Thank Elsa you. has two epic songs in this movie, Into the Unknown and Show Yourself. Yes. Did you add anything of your own to these songs? And if so, what? Well, of course. I mean, they're, they're written by the Lopez's and, um, but, the, of course I bring myself to whatever, I can't help but bring myself to whatever I'm singing. That's the whole point is to sort of open up your heart and your soul and, and channel whatever it is that feels appropriate for the character and the role. And um, it's a lot easier to do when you have great songwriters and sort of a map and a kind of like a, you know, they give you the, the magic carpet to, to ride on. but. Yeah, it's what I love about what we do is we make ourselves vulnerable and then kind of soar. Was there anything specific in the songs that you kind of took and just spun and made your own? Probably. I mean, I always like to mess with melodies, but I don't mess too much when they're written by Oscar-winning writers like the Lopez's. So normally I learn exactly what they give me, and then once in a while if something's coming to me, I and an interpretation I might be hearing in my head. I, I try something or I ask them if I can try something and sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't. Did you have a different mindset now that Elsa's a little older while you were singing? Um, maybe, not really while I was singing. I don't know if I had a different mindset while I was singing as far as the age or the time passage. I think it's more, yeah, it's more the, the emotions in the song and sort of this idea that in the first movie, Elsa was more introverted and apologetic for her, for her, um, her power and her magic. She was always fearful that she was going to hurt the people that she loved. And in this movie, she is more, um, she's coming into her own and she's really embracing it and owning it. So maybe the, I sang with that kind of intention. Yeah. 
So in Wreck-It Ralph, we get to see all the Disney princesses together, which is so cool. But has a Disney princess team-up movie, sort of Avengers style, ever been discussed? I don't know. Have you heard of, is there a rumor going around? That would be terrific. That would be fun. Would you want Elsa to be a part of a movie? Of course. Like that? Yeah. <laughs> For Into the Unknown as opposed to Let It Go, is Into the Unknown, is, are there higher notes in that song? <laughs> It sounds like there is. I think maybe, or maybe the end of Let It Go is the last note in the, it's probably, there probably are, or it, I don't know. I don't think of it that way, but I do tend to um, um, paint myself in a corner sometimes because we record on a day where I feel really great and I try things and you know, you're in the studio, you can try and make mistakes and and then something great happens and we catch it and then I'll be, you know, in London on tour and I have a cold and then I have to sing the song in front of thousands of people and I say, why did I put that note in there? Really quick, if Frozen became a live action, because I feel like it will one day, do you think you'd be cast as Elsa? And if not, who would you want to play Elsa? Oh, no, probably wouldn't. I mean, I'm sure they'd want much younger girls unless they use CGI, but um, <laughs> little Benjamin button action. <laughs> De-aging. Um, I have to think of this. You're the second person that's asked me this question, I have to think of how I would cast Elsa um, as a real person that wasn't me. And it's hard for me because it's, I always make it about me. <laughs> yeah. You're so much of Elsa. Elsa's you. Um, I don't know. I was thinking like Jennifer Lawrence, I guess, but I feel like, I don't know if she's just have to be even younger than that. Um, my favorite actresses, Rachel McAdams and Jennifer Lawrence and some of those guys, but they're probably too old too. <laughs> this Hollywood, too old in their 30s. Go. Unicorn, ice cream, castle, oaken, teapot, mouse. Oh, Elsa! <laughs> I don't think Olaf should get to rearrange. In this film, Kristoff gets his own musical number, <laughs> Lost in the Woods, and the entire theater was dying laughing when it came to life because it looked like this 80s, 90s <laughs> music video. Can you guys break down the scene for me? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to give too much away. And part of it's the experience it, experiencing it. But I think we just love those, I mean, those kind of ballads that just, they were the kind you did, you know, high school dances to, and you were tortured by love and um, really wanting to, to let Christoph open up. And so that was what inspired us. And so doing it in the vein of that and knowing that if you go inside Christoph's head, this is what the emotion looks like. <laughs> it's like an 80s music video. It's just heaven to me, and uh, and it, that's the great part of going into a fantasy. You can get it. You can get in there his head, and and um, you know to finally see Sven come to life in a new way. It was so hilarious. Were there any music videos that inspired it particularly? <laughs> I think there were a lot. There were a yeah, lot. we watched yeah. a lot, and then our story artists watched. I mean, they yeah. just probably watched every single video that's yeah. out there. So there's to homages to, yeah. to many of our favorites. Oh, I loved it. It was so funny. <laughs> I have to ask you guys about the Tarzan conspiracy that no, Anna. Don't ask them. Just ask me. Okay. Swiss <laughs> Chris Bucks. Chris, yes. This don't question. Blame them. This question is for you. And the conspiracy is that Anna and Elsa's parents, after being shipwrecked, yes. ended up in a jungle and giving birth to Tarzan, making Tarzan Anna and Elsa's know, brother. What amazing. are your thoughts? It's amazing, isn't it? I came up with that. I yes. Uh, we were doing an interview, and I. Naively said, you know, ah, why, 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 da, 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 and thinking that no one would really pick up on it, and then of course everyone picked up on it. Is uh, it true? Chris? My sons even said at one yeah. point they called me, said, "Dad, you're trending," and I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> and they're like, "No, top ten of every." Oh no! So it's not true. I just <laughs> made it up. Oh, man. But we do love all the fan theories. Yeah. So the more that they sort of put our movies together, the more entertaining it is for us. Yeah. Is this connected to any other Disney movie that we know of? Yeah, well, what's funny is we'll let the fans tell us because they yeah. seem to yeah, know true. the canon 10 times better. They make us look smarter than we are. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see what theories people come up with. <laughs> Me too. Um, so I wanted to ask you about Olaf. I love that he can read now. He's so much deeper this time around and we learned so much from him. But the one thing that I took away that I really liked was that water has memory. Mm -hmm. And it's this theme in the film. So what inspired that thought? Well, it it's actually is a scientific <laughs> fact that water has memory. Um, uh, glaciers obviously can hold a lot of memories through history, and we can learn a lot 
about the atmosphere and what took place you know, thousands of years ago. So uh, it's the only thing that other materials can dissolve in. So it, it, can, it can keep uh, what touches it, it can sort of keep some of that mm -hmm. with it. So I think all of that um, uh, It was, played in. did start with science, that concept, and then r that Alice's powers are connected to water. Olaf is made of you know, frozen water. Um, it just, it, it, it turned into fairy tale from there. That's what was fun. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. Ah! Elsa, get out of there! I feel like on behalf of the world, I just have to thank you guys for giving us the soundtrack of our lives. Aww. Thank you. That's so <laughs> you. sweet of you to say. And I don't know if a lot of people know this, but in the first film, Elsa was meant to be more of a villain, and then you both wrote Let It Go, and they rewrote the whole story around it. Did a similar situation happen this time around for Frozen 2? This time around, we um, weren't in a panic like we were in the first one. <laughs> so we got to do things the way they're supposed to be done, which is talking and talking and talking about story. Everything was in full collaboration, um, really led by Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck, and the questions that we knew were left unanswered from the first one. Why does Elsa have these powers? What is she meant to do with them? And everything sprang from everything we do springs from our collaboration with Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck, including Let It Go, by the way. Um, we wouldn't, there would be no Let It Go without those two. And we never sit down to write a song that we're not thrilled to write. Um, right. that's, the, that's the annoying thing about us. But I think it leads to better songs. <laughs> oh my God, it leads to the best songs. So we got seven new songs in this film. Were there any songs that maybe didn't make the cut or were left out that you both wrote? There were, there are seven songs. There was a song, a uh, first song that we wrote for Elsa um, really early in the screening cycle that was called Seek the Truth. Um, and it was, it had the same, it was sort of the precursor to Into the Unknown. Um, it was still her saying like, I want something, there are questions left for me. Um, Into the Unknown is more interesting because there's been a voice calling her and she's been resisting it because change is hard, change is scary, but there's a voice that only she can hear and hopefully that voice resonates with anyone who feels like they haven't found their purpose, but their purpose is calling them. Does it have higher notes than Let It Go? It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's, this is the note, it's E flat and it, it's the same as the high note for Let It Go. Uh, the, the voice sings higher notes, the little the, the soprano voice that she's chasing, but. Um, it's the same notes, but it's, it feels higher because what we're doing with music is into the unknown is an octave. That's your safe boundary. Into the unknown is sticking your That's toe over the boundary. <laughs> and then into the unknown That's an is basically just jumping out into the enchanted forest, into the place of growth and transformation. God, you guys are so magical. This is like such an incredible experience. What was it like working with Adina on Into the Unknown and deciding on that E flat? It's always a joy because she she brings truth to every song she sings. She can't she can't phone it in, she can't fake it, she can't do what you tell her to do. She can only do what's organic and feels natural to the character, and that's why it comes out so amazing. And those high notes don't feel phony at all. They're just they're someone calling out. And she's been a permanent partner with us um, from the beginning. We write to her voice. If, you, if we're given a Stradivarius, we're gonna write a song for a Stradivarius. <laughs> um, and she's, she's got the superpower because she's so warm and vulnerable when she's down low. And then as she gets more, as she gets higher, her voice is even more powerful. It's amazing.